Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Congratulations to all you moms for being here today. We love you. I'm going to have you all stand, if you would. We're going to pray and begin our worship service this morning. Hallelujah. Grab the hand of the person next to you, if you would, please, and we will uh, ask the Holy Spirit to come in today and move and work in our, in our midst. Father, we thank you so much for the presence of your Spirit. Thank you today, Lord God, for pouring out grace and mercy, blessing and healing to your people. We thank you, Father, that your love for us is never surpassed. Even by our sin, you still love us and forgive us and restore us and renew us. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 I want to read this psalm to you real quick. This is Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. I trust with him, or trust in him with all my heart. Amen. Is that you? He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. Hallelujah. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Today, don't be quiet. Burst out in song. Sing them. This is a gigantic screen for people like me that have a hard time reading small print. All the lyrics are up there. Please sing from your heart. Let the Lord work in your life this morning as you worship him. You ready? You set? You ready for this? In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation, when all is dark, you help us see. There is only one salvation. We believe. We believe. Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than ever. Raised in the here and now Let love invade Let the church live loud Our God will say We believe We believe Let the lost be found And the 
We believe in the Holy Spirit and she's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection and he's coming back. He's coming back again. To him. Believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun is shining down on me, when the world all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh, you give and take away. You give and take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
pour out, I will turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. I look to the cross I cling and in suffering I do drink of its work I do sing on it my Savior will prove that cross God is love, and God is just. At the cross you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love. I Cross you 
beckon me you. Amen. Draw me gently. Hallelujah. To my knees and I am lost for words. So lost in love. I'm sweetly broken.
proclaim your everything. My life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me through. You are my sustaining love. I live to
So sing them out. Amen. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. Hallelujah. I'm worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. Let him hear you. I'm going to worship you. Nothing to make him smile bigger. Sing it out loud. I'm going to worship you. Hallelujah. I'm going to worship you forever. Sing it to him this morning. He's here. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you.
Revelation 19 says, After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, sal salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot cor that corrupted the earth with her fornication and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. That great harlot is the enemy. There's going to be a time when the enemy is going to be crushed totally. Hallelujah. He no longer will be able to accuse us day and night like it says he does in Revelation. Then a loud voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants and those who fear him, both small and great. Hallelujah. Verse 6, And I heard, as it were, how many have been here when it's rained and you can hear it on the roof? A special. It says that there's going to be a time in heaven, the voice of a great multitude, the sound of many, it's going to be like the sound of many waters and the sound of a mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Our God's in charge. He's in charge of you if you'll just surrender and let him be in charge. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you worship this morning. Can I be, can I be prejudicial here a little bit? There's not a lot of places you can go to find this. This is special. We're not in a hurry. We're not trying to. They don't have beats they got to do, and then they got to go quit. You know, like this, they're just playing. Amen. Yeah. Gives you an opportunity to yeah. give God a big old hug and kiss. Hallelujah, man! I, I'll tell you what. This has been energizing for me. All the songs this morning, every one of them spoke to my heart. Every one of them spoke to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. Well, it's hard to do anything else today, but we, I guess we will. What a great way to honor you moms than by having this kind of praise and worship this morning. That's incredible. Thank you to the band. Hey, Guy, before you leave, I want you to come here real quick. We're going we're gonna to pray for Guy because Cindy's not doing well. She's not here today. She's very frustrated, and she's very upset that she can't come. So we are going to use Guy as an intermediate. He's going to go home and see her right now and bless her. So, Father, we just lift up. Cindy right now to you. We sure love her. She's part of our family. I don't care if she's got to wear sunglasses. I don't care if we just got to leave her be. But Lord, I thank you for healing her, for healing her Father, from the top of her head, through her eyes, her, her face, through her everything that's wrong. God, we thank you. You're making it right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, healing her now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, if you're going to make it a process, I pray that as she struggles through this, she'll give you praise and honor in yes. the struggle, Lord, to help her yes. and bless her and strengthen her now. Yes. In Jesus' precious Jesus name. name. Everybody agreed? Said amen. 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 All right, go home. Give her a hug for us. Amen. <laughs> we love her. We miss her. We really, really miss that wonderful woman of God. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated if you haven't been already. You can turn the house lights on if you want to, too, Scott, please. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, wow, I needed this today. I don't know about you. I just needed to really kind of just kick back, forget about things, and give Him praise. Amen. Well, you know, the Scripture says to give honor to whom honor is due. I want to thank the uh, Singing Davis family for helping us this morning. What a great job. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your ministry. Amen. And Chloe did awesome on that song, wherever you're at. I don't know where she is, but she's in the back, okay? Amen. We love Chloe to come to service as long as she brings Hazel. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And it's good to have all of you moms here today. We love you. We thank God for godly moms. And, uh, we appreciate you so much. I'm going to have Scott come. We'll go ahead and do this morning's offering. I haven't written my check out yet, but I will. If you're a visitor today, we have visitor cards. If you'd like to fill one out, stick it in the offering basket, that'd be great. Hallelujah. Amen. Got your offering ready. Let's just lift this up before the Lord. Don't forget the, the Thai 10% tax return challenge. He gives 10% of his refund every year. He's been doing this for forever. <laughs> Church has been here for 10 years. He's been, he and his wife have been here for almost the entire time. So, amen. We appreciate both Ty and D. Amen. Love you guys. So anyway, if you've got your tithe, your offering, whatever you're going to give to God this morning, just lift this up. 
Just like the farmers are putting seed in the ground right now, we're going to sow this as seed into the kingdom of God. So, Father, we thank you now for blessing this offering. Multiply it to the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. We just want to humbly give this area love of God, the grace of God, know the peace of God. Help us to do that, Lord. Give us wise ways to do it. We thank you. We praise you for it. Bless all those that give, press down, shaken together, and running over, as the book of Luke says. Let it pour into their life. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good to have you in the house this morning. I want to remind you that tonight we will have uh, the 6 o'clock Bible study. Excuse me. We're going to be talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit again this evening. It was a big topic of discussion last week. What's interesting about that is, is I had not planned on doing it. But you know what? God has better plans than we do. Amen? Well, if you don't agree with that, you will. Um, Next weekend, we have recovery at 6, of course, and uh, that's on Friday. Then also, next weekend on Saturday is Blessing Day. So if you'd like to come help pass out food, we'll be doing that at 10 o'clock, getting the boxes together. We have a ton of stuff. Um, Scott, be careful you don't roll over that kid behind you. Uh, we Dollar Tree called Friday, and I ran and got about 40 boxes full of mac and cheese and all kinds of stuff. So we are, we are blessed. If you know somebody that needs food, um, let us know. We're, we're really here to minister to the entire Pekin area and try to bless anybody that has that need. Hallelujah. Now, the neat thing about it is we're going to give them the food that feeds the physical body, but God wants to give you the food that feeds... Your soul. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to be here for that. You cannot get a box of this and have somebody bring it to you. You've got to come and get this box yourself. Amen. Amen. That's right. Terry will be doing foot massages after donations, or after the blessing day. <laughs> after donations. I'm sorry, the sentence says that. Where is Terry? I'm sorry, Terry, wherever you are. I saw her this morning. She's going to be doing foot massages. Uh, and donations will go to the New Life Young Adult Group. So I'm going to let her massage my feet for sure. I don't know about you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, on the 21st, which is next Sunday, we will have uh, the Lord's Table next Sunday. And we also will have T-shirt Sunday next Sunday. Now, if you don't have a T-shirt yet, this young lady up here in the front with her mother, you can talk to Connie, have her get you a shirt. I meant to bring one this morning. Scott's got his on if you want to see him. That, Scott's got a blue one. I've got a yellow one, kind of a yellowish, goldish color. I'm going to wear my gold one, I think, my yellowish one on Sunday next week. But if you don't have one, get one. They're cheap. They're only 10 bucks, and we will get them for you. So if you want to get it, we need, how many do we have ordering now, about four or five? We have nine. We just need two or three more people to order. Wow. I might order another one just so we get that order in. I want to get them for you guys. Then the 21st will be the last Sunday night uh, Bible study we'll have until fall. So that's uh, the 21st. All right. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, don't forget Wednesday night. Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Uh, Actually, Scott will be sharing. He's got a great word. We went over it yesterday in Men's Fellowship, which was a great, great time. And I appreciate Scott for for preparing. it. He's uh, got a lot of stuff in mind. If you haven't gotten a May calendar, they're out there on the... uh, Dresser, thank you. And that'll give you everything that's going on. Everything you need to know and we're afraid to ask is on this calendar. Every question you would have ever asked about life. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, that's back there on the table. Just seeing if you guys were listening. Amen. (laughs) Sarah was. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and let the kids go to Kids Zone. So children, you are dismissed. And bless the teachers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, don't it make you want to shout hallelujah? Thank you. Amen. So we uh, want to have the rest of you stand to your feet, if you would, and we're going to pray for this morning's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> This has just been so good. I've been at church today. I don't know about you all, but I have just enjoyed this. 
Can I be honest with you? If you just sit there or if you just sing and you don't get into it, you're missing a blessing and a half. I'm telling you, some, I see some people going, yeah, amen. Because I'm telling you, a lot of healing, a lot of restoration, a lot of the burden and the oppression of the, of the enemy will be lifted off of you if you would just let yourself go and worship. That's why we sing those songs about surrender. That's why he says, lift your hands. Amen? Now, let me tell you, if you were walking out of Walmart to your car and some guy got up behind you and put a gun in your back and said, hands up, I think you'd surrender, wouldn't you? All right. Well, God doesn't do that. He gives you the opportunity to voluntarily surrender. You've got to do it yourself. So do it, man. Be happy now. Amen. By your heads. Father, we thank you for the power and the presence and the purpose of your Holy Spirit this morning in the house. Lord, I don't want anyone to leave with a heavy heart today. Let them all leave, Father God, rejoicing in you, being filled with you, being happy in you, O God, being filled with the presence of the Holy God who heals, renews, restores, gives a new chance, a new start to everybody here in the house. We thank you for that, Lord God. We give you praise for it. Lord, let your word come through loud and clear. Let us hear it today, God. Let our ears hear that which the Holy Spirit would speak to this church today. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said amen. amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. All right. Got a couple Mother's Day jokes for you. You ready for this? Yes, you are. A three-year-old put his shoes on by himself. Three-year-olds are special, aren't they? There's just something special about three-year-olds. Yeah, Sarah's had a lot of three-year-olds. Um, his mother noticed the left, the left shoe was on the right foot, and the right shoe was on the left foot. So she, she said to him, son, your shoes are on the wrong feet. He looked at her with his eyebrow raised and said, don't kid me, mom. I know they're my feet. <laughs> Sounds like a three-year-old, doesn't it? <laughs> Here's another good one. This is one that it takes moms to know this. Three-year-old boy went with his dad to see a litter of kittens. On returning home, he said, Mom, we really had a hard time trying to figure out whether there were boy kittens or girl kittens. How do you know that that's true? Ma? The boy asked his mother, and his mother said, Well, I'll tell you what. You pick them up, you look underneath, and I think it's printed on the bottom. <laughs> that's a good mom. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day <laughs> to all you moms. We appreciate you so much. Oh. And here I thought it was because you loved me you were applauding. That's okay. All those TV shows, they have applause signs that go on. and they're... I'm just kidding. Ha, 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 yeah. I don't. I got to take the graphics card away from the guy back there. He's just getting too too loose with it. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> we first of all want to honor all you moms today um, that brought up your children in the training of the Lord in word and example. And I know there's many mothers in here that have done that in the past. I got a quote here by Billy Graham: "Only God Himself truly appreciates the influence of a Christian mother." of the molding of the character of her children. And I want to encourage you moms today, don't you be discouraged or disheartened if all your kids aren't where you want them to be. Don't, don't be discouraged or disheartened if they're not walking the way that maybe you'd like them to walk today. Just know that you tried, and just know that if you continue to pray for them, God will change things in ways you can't even think of. So don't lose heart or be depressed by what you see, because remember, we don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith. Faith sees where seeing doesn't. And so you've got to continue to remain in faith. So what we've done this morning is we've got a great skit by the skit guys. I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Fortunately, Shane hasn't seen this yet either, so he said uh, this will be the first time he sees it. But this is uh, the skit guys.
it's that time again, the time that we celebrate all the wonderful women that helped us be all we can be. I'm talking about moms. So moms, and as for the many things she gave me. Hey, 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 hey well, what, what you doing, what you doing? I just thought we might do a song for the moms for Mother's Day. Hi moms, hi. Hi mommy, this is for you mommy. M is for the many things she gave us. We get it, we get it. M is for the many things she gave us. We get it, that's very cute, that's very well, cute. you're pretty quick for a bald guy. Everyone join in. Oh, means that I I just thought that we'd do a heartwarming message for all the moms out there instead of a campy little song. Oh, means that I owe her a lot. Okay, 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 you do it your way, I will do it my way. Moms, we owe you so much. Thank you for being she there. She is for her tender, sweet caresses. H is for her hands that made a home. You've made a home. You've made a home. Home on the range. Okay, stop it. She did make a home on the range. You probably called it like a stove, but we had a range at my house. And she meant that home. word home. Oh, that means so much. We still long to be in your presence. We still long for you to be proud of us. And yes, we still long to come home. Okay, this isn't working. What? No, no, no. You, you're you faking it. I am not. You're forcing the no, tears. No, it's real. No, no, no. This does not work in any way. Oh, this works. The song works. This does not work. I just thought we'd speak from the heart. That's what moms <sighs> want. You know what? Mom always liked you best anyway. <laughs> we don't even have to say mom. He's everything you've done to help me. Like that time you helped me find my shoes in first grade and in college and there was that time also that uh, Tammy Cornball broke up with me crazy last name right but she was really a sweet girl until she broke up with me and I was sad but you made me feel better you brought in some chocolate chip cookies and some milk and you made you know what what can make me feel this way mother talking about my mom mommy <laughs> and R stands for right and right you always shall be, right in our eyes, right with the values that you instilled in us so sacrificially, and right in how you taught us to love God and love others. And so, mothers, today we say to you... Put them all together, they spell mother, the word that means the world to me, the word that means the world to mama. When I said I didn't like your meatloaf when I was five It's not my fault, it needed salt But that doesn't really matter Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day Those guys are something, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Mama. Um, well, anyway. Um, so this morning, all you moms, we just want to continue to honor you. I was blessed with a, a great mom that loved me and prayed for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit when I was a little boy. She's sitting here this morning. God answered her prayer for both me and for my sister. There was a time, uh, I wanted to tell you just a quick story. One time I got in trouble with my mom one day. I know that's hard to believe, but I did get in trouble, and... Uh, I, I've told this joke or this story before. It's a true story, actually, but if you've never heard it, then this is the first time for you. But I had a metal checkerboard that had, that, that had magnetized little checkers on it, and uh, I knew she was going to whack me on my you-know-what's-its, and I probably deserved it at the time. Very rarely, but I did deserve it, I think, this time. I think I teased my sister about something. <clears throat> but anyway, I took that metal checkerboard, and I stuck it down the back of my pants because I knew she was going to hit me there, right? So I remember her chasing me around the house and finally catching me, and she went whack and hit her hand on that metal checkerboard. And that hurt. She was, she was hurt. She said, all she had to do was tell me this, wait till your father gets home. All I can say is I've blanked out the rest of it. I don't even remember what happened. It was that bad. But uh, I am so thankful for a godly mother, and I appreciate her very much. So thank you, Mom. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, this is a quote by Dwight L. Moody, and I think he's got that up there already. The impression that a praying mother leaves upon her children is lifelong. Perhaps when you are dead and gone, your prayer will be answered. 
So please, moms, never let the enemy lie to you that just praying for your children is some sort of vain thing that is meaningless because it's not. It's huge in shaping young lives. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Methodist Church. Anybody heard of the Methodist Church before? Well, John Wesley and his brother Charles, God prayed through his, their mother, they, he, her, excuse me, his mother, their mother prayed for them a lot. They were very rowdy young boys, but they got saved and started a work that God later turned into the Methodist Church. That's why it used to be called the Wesley United Methodist Church. It was after John Wesley, the founder. Your prayers are never in vain. And sometimes you're never going to be there to see all the results like you'd like to see. Sometimes it's just not going to happen that way. So I've got a, a young woman I want to speak to you about a little bit this morning. I think Shane also found a picture uh, of her. And uh, her name, you probably never heard of her. Anybody ever heard of, of Elizabeth Scatliff Newton? One person. She died quite young, but she had a son. Elizabeth was part of a movement in England called the Nonconformist. You know why they were called Nonconformist? Because they got born again, and they, the Church of England didn't want anybody in the church born again. Yeah. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Very strange. They had to use certain rules and regulations in the Church of England. You had to follow everything to the letter, or you were not considered whatever Christian. So she was part of this, what they called non-conformist movement. When she was a young lady, she asked Christ into her heart and had been born again. All right? She prayed from the heart that the Lord would give her a child. And she did not use the prayer book that was mandated by the church that she's supposed to use. Because remember, she was a non I want to be that kind of Christian, don't you, non-conformist? I don't want to conform to what the world thinks a Christian should be or maybe what some highfalutin church thinks that they ought to be. I just want to walk with God according to what this says I'm going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And this says I'm forgiven. How about you? Yeah. This says I have a great future ahead of me. How about you? Yeah. Amen? This says right here that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. This says if you want to really be happy, quit trying to find it the way the world does and all the stuff hanging around because you ain't going to find it there. I don't care how Christian you think you are, how many times you've been to church, you're not going to find it till you get hooked up to Him. Yeah. You've got to be hooked up to Him to get this. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Come on, church. Wake up this morning. Hallelujah. So she prayed for a, a child, and she had one. His name was John. She prayed for him all the time. All the time she prayed for him and prayed for his blessing. All right? And she was very young, and he was but seven years old. The Lord took her home. She died. She never saw his life except by faith. She never saw his life except by faith. Some of you need to quit looking here and see ahead and see above for your kids by faith. Amen. Well, John went the wrong direction. Actually, when he was about 14 years old back in that day, the, the English uh, Navy would actually take young men off the street and put them in service and make them be on these ships. So he was pressed into service at the age of 14, traveled the globe. He ended up have, captaining his own ship and started transporting slaves from uh, different places in Africa to Haiti, to, uh, to the Americas. And he was a very evil guy, very cruel man, and a very evil occupation. He was nothing that his mother had prayed that he would be. Till something happened in the year 1748. That was the year my mom was born. During a severe storm. <laughs> I had to tease her a little bit. That's all right. We'll give her back her flower at lunch today. But anyway, he became this awful slave trader. But in 1748, he was rounding into going into England and a severe storm rose and began to destroy the old wooden ship that he was in. Rock that thing, man. Things started falling off of it. Mast fell. And he was thrust into the bottom of the ship and uh, water was coming in. And he prayed and he cried out to God. Gee, I wonder why. You've got to remember, brothers and sisters, and we sang that this morning. It's better than a hallelujah. Amen. 
that cry from a heart that needs God. Cole, you did an awesome job on that song. You're doing that so good. So blessed by that. But when you pray for your children, God will do miraculous things. Amen? My mom prayed that I would be filled with the Spirit. And at age 19, it happened in a church I thought... I, it happened in a way I would have never, ever guessed possible. Okay? So John Newton's in the bottom of this ship crying out to God, save me, because his mother had prayed for him and taken him and taught him, taken him to church, taught him the word, Amen. prayed with him, prayed for him. Moms, don't discount that. that that's, uh, that's huge. Amen? We used to pray with our kids all the time. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I can tell you right now to this day, not everything's happened in their lives I want to see happen, but that's not up to me. Hallelujah. That's not my choice. Hallelujah. My choice for them is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, walk with God, being happy and joyful and not making their priorities the things of the earth, but the things of God being their priority. That's where happiness is at. You know, they're not all there yet, but they're coming. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't care. I'm 63. I don't care if it's 83 or 93 or I'm gone. It's going to happen to them. I believe that. So don't stop praying for your kids. So John Newton cries out to the Lord in the bottom of this ship. There was some cargo in the bottom of the ship that actually fell into the holes and plugged them up so the ship didn't go down and it actually made it to port. A miracle. Well, in that time, John Newton said, God, save me and I'll do whatever you want. Some of us need to get to that point, don't we? Like I said, the ship was rescued and John Newton came to Christ. He goes to seminary and becomes one of the most powerful ministers in England in that time in the nonconformist movement. He was writing a sermon in 17, I think about 1768, 1778, something like that, around in that time. And, he, and in, when he was writing this sermon about God's grace, he was given a song by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he writes this song down. He has it published in 1779. And we still sing that song to this day. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That song has been repeated, according to what I read, over 500 million times since 1779. The power of a mother's prayers. Who says praying is the least you can do? If you pray in faith like this little mom did, Elizabeth uh, Newton, John's mother, I believe God will do great things in your children. Amen? Now, I realize this morning that some of you are probably hurting over where your kids are at. Some of you have adult children especially. Right? That's hard sometimes when your adult children don't go the way you want them to go. Amen? I'm just going to be honest with you. At one time in this church, back when we first started, Listen to this. I had my nephew and his wife and their kids, my son, his wife, and their kids, and my mom, all in church, plus my niece, her husband, and their daughter, all at the same time. I remember being blessed by that and standing in the back one day crying my eyes out when I saw all of them up here playing and singing because my uh, Becca's husband, Jason, plays bass. Ian was the worship leader. You know, it was just an awesome experience. Chris was playing with them. It was wonderful, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, this is the truism of life. Never let things that are great get you too high or the things that are bad get you too low. I was standing in the back, and I was just crying. I said, Lord, I am so blessed. Thank you so much. I just appreciate you. you know what the Holy Spirit said. Enjoy this while it lasts. Amen. Enjoy this while it lasts. Yeah. Do you serve me because you see them? I said, no, Lord, I don't. I'm so thankful. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. One by one, the enemy brought all of them through tests and trials. And as you can tell, none of them except my mom are here today. I think that's sad. I don't like that. It's troubling. But you know what? They're believers. They're walking with God. Maybe not the way I think they should. But I'm telling you what, the prayers of their mom and their stepmom, and I want, you, I want to encourage you that are stepmothers in here. I want to tell you something. Debbie was one of the most awesome stepmothers I've ever seen. She did never treated 
any of the kids like they weren't hers. She treated them all and loved them all. She has great joy over all of them, and she has great heartache over all of them. I think that's a mom, right? But I want to encourage you, if you have stepchildren in here, you know, when, when we got married, uh, Ron Callahan was the pastor who married us over at uh, First Assembly in Pekin. And he took us into his office and he said, I just want to share this with you guys. My real name is not Callahan. We're like, okay, what is it, Smith, Jones, Trump? What is your last name? And he said, no, my last name is different. He said, my mom married my dad. My dad was a raging alcoholic who beat me, beat her. She finally left him, got remarried, married a guy named Callahan. He was the best father I could have ever asked for. So you guys that are stepdads in here, that's a challenge to you. Don't be a flunky. Be a father. So anyway, he raised Ron Callahan in the admonition of the Lord. Some of you know who Pastor Ron is. He's a great man of God. Love that guy. He told us when we got married, he said, never treat your children differently. Try to treat them as fairly and as equally as you possibly can. And always regard, even if it's your stepchildren, as though they're your own. We use that as a rule of thumb. And I'm so glad that we did. And I want to encourage you, there's step parents in here, to be the best parent you can be. Now, there's also parents that are spiritual parents in the, in the kingdom of God, in the family of God, in the church. I want to speak to some of you for just a minute. I want you to hear this. I really believe that we are on the edge of some really great things. And the only way that it's going to happen is if some of you step up and be mothers and fathers in the house of God to be the kind of mentors that will take people aside unselfishly, not taking sides, but love them and lead them in the way that they should go. I cannot do it all. God never called me to do it all. He's called some of you to step up and be the right kind of mentors for the kids in here. And I call them kids. I don't care if they're 25 or 35 or 45. They're still kids to me. That's sad. I'm that old, or even like. But we need moms and dads in the house of God. The Lord doesn't want you traipsing in here, hallelujah, give your five bucks or whatever you do, and then traipsing out and not being involved with each other. It takes the church as a whole working together, helping one another, being there for each other. Hallelujah. Now, some of you in here are single moms, basically. You don't have a, a father figure. I want to pledge to you that I will be the best possible father figure I can be for your kids. I will love them like a grandfather. I'll be good to them. I won't give them too much candy. Now, when I do Kid Zone, well, I'm going to do Kid Zone Wednesday night, by the way. I am going to give them tons of candy as we leave. No, I'm just kidding. But I just want you to know that I want you that are here to try to step up into a real good calling and lead some of these kids, some of these young parents by an example, by praying, by coming up alongside of them and saying, hey, how you doing? How you doing, man? What's going on? Amen? Amen. And some of you that are being mentored, get ready. God's going to use you to be one too. Are you hearing this? Yeah. Come, on. Come on. I believe we're going to see this place teeming with people, but you're going to have to step up before. You know why it hasn't happened yet? Because I can't do it all. It ain't going to happen until we all do it all. Read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. When Jesus ascended, he, he, sent, he took captives, let them go. Then when he descended, he brought gifts to the earth, to the church, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Five-fold ministry, like a man's hand, right? When he did that, he said that they would train people and encourage them to do what? To do the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry was never supposed to be done by Pastor Mark or Pastor John or George or Sue or Pat or whoever it is. It's supposed to be by all of the body of Christ to one another. There's a lot of people missing today. You know some of them that are missing. Why don't you give them a little buzz or a text? Yo, missed you today. Sup. I do that all the time. Some of you get those before? Anybody get those? Yeah, I know Greg did. Hallelujah. By the way, I wanted to share this. I went to see Greg in the hospital, and his daughter was, was there, Braylee, and 
she sat at the end of his bed and she started singing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I just about bawled my eyes. I had to hold back my tears. I thought, man, that little girl doesn't even know what she's singing. But to have that, how old is she? Six? Six years old going, oh, holding her little dolly, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Someday that little girl is going to be either up here singing or she's going to have her own children and she'll be singing to them. But the impression and the gifts that you guys have given her by bringing her here and loving her at home and letting her sing her little heart out, I don't care if it's off key or not. That don't matter no more. But just to hear her heart, and she was not just singing. I mean, she had her eyes closed and she was squinting. She was all into it, man. I thought, man, that little girl is awesome. I want to be like that. And the kingdom of God cannot be received until you receive it as a child. There's no doubt in that little girl's heart that God loves her. I hope there's no doubt in yours. Now, I want to take just a couple of minutes. I don't want to overdo this, but I realize many here this morning had mothers who failed you. And this can be a difficult day for you if you had a mom that just didn't measure up, that that just blew it. I've shared many times here that the personality of most people is formed between the ages of 0 to 10. By 10 years old, did you know this? Psychologists say by the age of 10, you'll never change the rest of your life. You will be who you are up to that age forever. Now, I, we know God's able to do miracles. Okay, psychologists don't even understand that. So we believe God above and beyond it. But you've got to understand, you that have been entrusted with these kids that are under 10 years old, you've got to be careful what you do. Don't tease them. Don't, don't uh, provoke them to wrath, as the Scripture says. Try to raise them and love them and be there for them. Spank them when they need it. Did you hear me? Spank them sometimes when they need it. I'm not talking about beating them. Amen. I tell the story many times about my grandson, CJ, putting his finger in the light socket, right? I told him no about three times. He's looking at me doing it the next time. So you know what I did, right? I go over and grabbed his little hand. He was only about four years, three or four years old. I hit him about that hard. You'd have thought I shot him with a gun. But you know what? I love him more than letting him put his finger in there and get electrocuted. And you know what else? He never did it again. At least not when I was around. And I thought I would have had to smack him again. I didn't want to do that. Like your parents used to tell me, or my dad used to tell me, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I said, yeah, right. But uh, you have a, a sacred gift, you moms, to have these children with you. And maybe I, may I be honest again that many of you here carry in your souls the wounds received as a child from ages of 0 to 10. You've got wounds deep inside your soul. And the relevance of those years is what was done then affects you now. It impacts you now, your decisions, how you feel about yourself, your ability to trust other people or trust God. And his heart this morning is to lift this from your mind and to heal you. Amen? So the rest of this is really nothing but scriptures. This is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 through 3. Jesus repeated this in the book of Luke when he was doing his first few sermons. Actually, he gave this word right after he came out of the wilderness and been tempted and tested by the enemy for 40 days. The Lord sees your pain and sorrow. His heart is to lift this from your mind and heal you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and to the afflicted. God wants you to know this morning, if you feel afflicted by pain from your past, Jesus wants to lift you up out of that. Amen? He goes on to say, He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. Now, maybe you're brokenhearted this morning out of the way that you were raised. Or maybe when you raised your kids, you weren't where you wanted to be in God. And you feel like you made great mistakes. God wants you to know this morning, He wants to mend and bind your broken heart. He wants to take the pieces that were broken in your life and glue them back with the glue of the Holy Spirit and make it stronger than it ever was before. He wants to do that in you. Hallelujah. To 
proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the spiritual captives. Some of you are still captive to the past. Jesus wants to set you free from that past. He wants you to do it, many of you, in a thing called a process, one step at a time. Amen? Yeah. You still hear you? Still got you? Yeah. Freedom to the prisoners. Some of you are still imprisoned by the past and how you were raised and what your mother did or didn't do to you. Hallelujah. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. We studied this yesterday, and this came to my mind this morning. There was a time when Jesus was getting ready to come into Jerusalem, and he was riding on a little pony, a colt, and he started crying before he came in Jerusalem. You know why? He said this, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You could take Jerusalem out and say, Oh, you lost and hurt ones. How many times I would have gathered you to myself as a hen takes her chicks under her wing. Hallelujah. He was speaking this to a bunch of lost people. He speaks this to you because some of you are lost. Even though you're found by Christ, you're still lost inside and hurting. And God says, I want to bring you out of that lostness and out of that pain and set your feet on a new path of freedom, of joy, of happiness, of peace. The favorable year of the Lord. Jerusalem did not know the day of the Lord's visitation. The Lord's visitation for you is now, today. Receive it. He says, the day of vengeance and the retribution of our God. You know what the vengeance of God was? Taking your sin and he put it on Jesus. That is the retribution of God. That is the vengeance of God. He put it off of you and he took vengeance on it on the cross to set you free from it. I'm telling you what, this is good stuff. This is good stuff, Maynard. All right, to conform, or to comfort, I'm sorry, or console all who mourn. Mourning is usually we associate it with death, but mourning can also be with a loss. You can mourn the loss of your family life because you didn't have one when you were a kid. Maybe you mourn the loss of the time you had with your kids because you just weren't right with God at that point and you didn't know how to do it, right? Does God anywhere say he's going to get you for that? Absolutely not. He wants to give you his grace instead. Man, can I say something without hurting anybody's feelings? You all know who Gloria Steinem is. She's the head of the women's movement in the 70s and 60s and as a real radical she said the reason that the earth is suffering right now is because there's not been enough abortions. When I heard her say that, and I read this quote, it just pierced my heart. I just want you to know if that ever happened to you, that God loves you and he has nothing. He's not holding anything against you. He wants to heal you from that experience. He wants you to be raised up and be happy for the children that you do have. Amen? That's the attitude of the world right now. It's sick. It's pathetic. So he's going to console and comfort all those who have had a loss, maybe a future. Maybe you feel like your future is lost because of your past. He's going to give you hope for your present. And he's going to heal you from your broken past because he's got a great future for all of you in here. To grant those who mourn in Zion the following things. This is so cool. I have been meditating on this for the last three or four days on these three things. Number one, he gives you a crown of beauty instead of a crown of ashes. Back in the old days in the east, when someone died, they'd tear their garment, okay? They'd go down to where the fire was at. They'd take ashes out of the fire, and they would put them all over themselves as significant of their mourning and their grieving. So they would look dirty and nasty, they would almost look like a ghost. They'd get so covered with all these ashes. And God's saying, I want to take the ashes of mourning off of you. Yeah. And instead, I want to give you a crown of beauty. Yeah. Beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. When you are mourning, the last thing you are is beautiful. And yet God says you're the most beautiful thing on the planet. What's he saying that for? Because he wants you to shake this all off and take his crown of beauty and put it on your head. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He beautifies, the scripture says, the meek with his salvation. Hallelujah. Second thing is to take the oil of joy or gladness instead of mourning. Mourning can also be sorrow or regret or shame that you might feel for what you did in your past. He wants you to take that off. Almost like I could take off my coat and put on a new coat and that a coat of joy and happiness instead. Hallelujah. Number three, he wants to give you, and you could have had this this morning, the garment of praise. Hallelujah. What is the garment of praise? The garment of praise means it's something that's not really natural. You have to put it on like, like a new coat. And you let that penetrate you, and you begin to give him worship and praise and thanks. Amen. We sang that this morning about praising him, right? Yeah. Worshiping him. Hallelujah. When do you do that? James 1, 2. Give him praise in every test, in every storm. But he wants to give you a new garment of praise. And the scripture says, instead of a disheartened spirit. You know what that means? Instead of depression. Depression will pull you down and make you sad and unhappy, right? And God's saying, you don't need that. You don't need to be that way this morning. I want to give you a spirit of praise, a garment of happiness, the oil of joy. Hallelujah. So how do I get that, Pastor Mark? You have to have a little meeting. You have to have a little counseling session with yourself. Sort of like this. Self? Yes. See what I'm saying? How do you talk to yourself? Self? Yeah. We're not going to think today about all the depressive thoughts, okay? Why not, man? Because it says here that if I have the garment of praise, hallelujah, stuff will come off of me. Amen. Praise God. Do you want to do you want to have a depressed day today? Well, no. All right. Well, let's worship God. Hallelujah. Well, how do I do that? Holy Spirit. You are welcome. I don't care. Find a song, any song. Pick a song. Don't pick your nose. Pick a song. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill my atmosphere. Make it personal. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And just start worshiping the Lord. I will give you praise with all of my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goes on to say, Isaiah does, they will be called trees of righteousness, strong and magnificent, distinguished for integrity, justice, and being right with God, the planning of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Isaiah said again in verse 15 to chapter 49, you moms this morning that are going through a difficult time today, I will not forget you. Isaiah 66, 13, I will comfort you as a mother should, and you will be comforted. If you had a mom that greatly failed, Mother's Day can bring up some bad memories. Maybe she, she abandoned you in some way. We acknowledge you and celebrate you because we know this has not been an easy journey for some of you in here this morning. The very person who was supposed to love you and nourish you abused you. Some of you were neglected. She didn't provide the loving home that you needed. Maybe she was gone doing something else. Maybe you lived in chaos and turmoil in your house. Maybe she loved a boyfriend or boyfriends more than she did you. She might have been a drug addict or an alcoholic. I have no idea who neglected you. If that was the kind of place that you were in, be honest. Don't live in denial. Remember that. Denial's what? A river in Egypt. I want to thank you for being here today, you moms today, or you that are children that were in that situation. We pray for you to be healthy in spite of the toxic environment that you were raised in. Amen? God gives us great hope. Listen to this, Psalm 27.10. Although my father and mother have abandoned me, yet the Lord will take me up, adopt me as his child, and hold me close. 
If you feel that way about your upbringing, know this. you got a heavenly father that wants to be your mom, yeah. your dad, your all-sufficient supply, your refuge, your healer, the one who fights for you, the one who's got your back, the one who loves to provide everything you need. He's here. Hallelujah. You're his now. Did you know that? Hallelujah. Listen to this. Ephesians 1.5. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. You've been adopted today. If your family was screwed up, God's adopted you into his healthy family today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's given you that. Take it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By bringing you to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gives him great pleasure to adopt you into his family. No matter what your past, God's given you a new present in Christ and a great future as you keep on walking with him. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 8, 15. So you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you've received God's spirit when he adopted you, adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. Did you know Abba in Hebrew, if you translate it perfectly into English, what that says? Daddy. The creator God of the universe who could smash it that fast if he wanted to, who could take all your personal will and end it and not give you a will at all and take it away from you, doesn't do that. Instead, he says, call me daddy. Just call me daddy. Woohoo! You don't have to go, oh, holy father, reverent one, oh God. Sometimes I hear people pray and it's like they're writing him a letter. Dear God. Comma, it's just me, goofball, period. Next paragraph, please hear me today, God. I have a long list that I want to unfold for you. Hey, Dad? Yeah? I need help. Yeah, come on. Hey, Daddy, you there? Sure am. Man, I'll tell you what, I just need you desperately today. I'm looking for meaning in all the wrong places today. Help me not to. Oh, God, as I woke up this morning, you know what I, I said to the Lord? Oh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you today, oh, God. Lord, you said in your word, Jesus said this, if you don't abide in me, you got nothing. Without me, Lord, I want to abide in you today. And you know what, Lord? I have no idea what that even means. Can you please show me? You know what Daddy says? Absolutely. Let's go. Hang on. Hang on to your seat, man. God's saying, it's going to go fast. Let's go. You ready? Woohoo! He's ready. Are you? Amen? Hallelujah. John Newton said one time, and if you've ever got a chance to get the movie, get the movie Amazing Grace. Yon Grafood stars as William Wilberforce. He's the guy that's in Fantastic Four. Uh, he plays the, the rubbery guy. He also plays William Wilberforce in the movie. But he visits John Newton in a, in a church, and John Newton's wearing rags. And he's washing the floor with a mop. You know why he does that? I'm not worthy to be God's kid. You know what he tells John Newton, tells William Wilberforce? All I know is this. I was a great sinner, and I received God, and he is the great Savior. Yeah. Hallelujah. I was a great sinner. He's a great Savior. He changed my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We love you moms today. He wants to take you up into his arms of comfort and love this morning. His grace accepts us. His mercy forgives us. And his presence lives in us. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Stand and let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody stretch. Big deep breath in. Relax a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you may have read this on Facebook, but my grandson CJ uh, was riding his sister's bike. Chain came off. I'm not sure if it hit him in the head or it just he fell off and hit his head, but he got knocked out. They took him. Yeah, he had a minor concussion. They took him to the uh, ER, and uh, they did a CAT scan on him. I teased him while I was there. I said, you know what, CJ, they did a CAT scan on me too. Couldn't find a thing. He giggled a little bit, which was good because he was scared to death. I don't know why he was so scared, but he was scared in there. And they came back and said that they found a little spot 
uh, behind his eye. So they lifted his eyelid to try to figure out what was in there. Of course, he's freaking out about this time. You know, oh, God, God, they're lifting my eyelid. But uh, I understand. It was a little uncomfortable. But uh, they couldn't find anything in his eye, so they referred him to a uh, neurosurgeon and an ophthalmologist to take a look and make sure of whatever it is. Now, I want to be honest with you. I don't like that. Can I also be honest with you? Sure. My God's greater than any pea-sized crap that's behind his eye. Yeah. They told me, they said it's about the size of a, of a little pea or a BB. It's real small. But they think it might either be a, they're not even sure it's a tumor. They think it could be, or it could be a little bone chip. They're not sure off his, op, his uh, ocular bone there, whatever they call that. Orbital. Yeah. Um, so we need to pray for him this morning. Uh, he's going to be... Actually, it was a blessing, Sarah. It was a blessing that this happened because they would have never discovered this without him being in the ER. So God's got it all under control. Now, he's not here. CJ's not here this morning. But if he were here, I would tell him this. God's got great plans for him. I know that by the Spirit. Not because he's my grandkid. I know that by the Spirit. Amen? <clears throat> he's not done with it. This kid's got a tender heart. Anybody else need prayer this morning for some? We need to pray for Will Seeley today. He's really struggling with his teeth. Yeah. Mom in her spine. Okay, we need to pray for that. Sarah? We will pray for, that's your mom, Brett? Yeah. We'll pray for Brett's mama today. I've met her. She's a sweet lady. And it's a terrible thing to live under this junk that the enemy throws on moms if their kids somehow don't succeed, whether they die or whether they're in jail or whatever the process might be. Amen, Jeff. We will pray that. Forgive himself. Forgive herself. Some of you moms need to do that when you feel like you're being condemned. Amen. You guys can go ahead and play something softly if you want to. Amen. Chloe. For Quentin. Okay. If you don't know, that's her brother, Clinton. We need to pray for him. He's making some decisions. We need to really pray he'll walk with God, Terry. Okay. Her daughter Lee. We need to say what? And Kelly. Okay. We need to pray for Chris Coffey this morning too. He's off in Iowa working this weekend. Continue to lift him up in prayer, Adam. Adam's grandmother, if you don't know this, is in the nursing home and we need to pray for her. Pray for Adam. This is a tough situation. Anybody else? Now, <clears throat> yeah, we need to pray for Chris Lusk. Yeah, you tell her Happy Mother's Day for us, okay? Love you guys. Pray for her, her granddaughter, Brooke. We need to pray for her great-granddaughter, actually. Amen. And while we're praying this morning, if you're a mom that's hurting, if you feel shame or condemnation, I don't want you to walk out this door today feeling that way. If your kids have gone off, made decisions that have screwed up their lives, it's not your fault. They're old enough, make their own decisions. It's not your deal. But you sure can pray for them. And if they ever call you, you sure can love on them. You're going to have to overlook their smarty pantsness and love them anyway. Amen? I love adult children. I've told you many times, I have three sons. I'd love to get them right face to face to face. You know why, right? I won't repeat that. Amen. Grab the hand of the person next to you, and we're going to pray this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we lift up all these needs that have been voiced this morning. Uh, for the mothers that are not here that are struggling today, we pray for them, God, that you comfort their hearts, that the word of encouragement would come to them in the name of Jesus. And God, that you would just place your hand upon their lives, bring peace and joy and happiness and freedom to them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for all their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren that have not walked right with you, that, God, you'll call them back, Lord. If they have something traumatic happen to them, God, they won't just give up, but they'll turn to you with a whole heart, God. Thank you for healing those today that need it, Will and CJ and others that need healing today, Father. 
We pray for their healing. For, for these mom as well, God, we lift them up to you, Lord. Do a miraculous work, go God, in their bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for that. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord, and give you praise. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's give him thanks this morning. He's doing a great work in all of you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. I live to worship you, O oh God. I live to worship you, O oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you thanks for these moms today, O oh Lord. Bless these mothers, O oh God. Give them grace and wisdom.